So here's the materials we're going to need for this project. You're going to need some 110 pound plain white cardstock. So we have that here. Um, and then for the album and decorating itself, you're going to need the um, paper kit. So I have the 12 by 12 made with love um, collection kit. I also purchased the patterned papers. You don't need these, they're optional, um, but we'll definitely be using the paper kit. And we may use a couple of sheets from the six by six. If you have that, if you don't, you will have enough paper from the paper kit to decorate this album. Um, but also I have these recipe cards from the kit that we're going to use. And they are great because they are um, have all the information you need. So we'll be using these recipe cards because of course this is a recipe album. If you didn't buy these recipe cards, that's no problem. You can just um, create your own um, little recipe cards. Just measure out a bunch of four by six cards and then embellish them. And then of course I also have the ephemera packs from the Made With Love kit that we're going to um, embellish the little album with. Um, other than that, then we just have some basics that we'll need. So I'm going to occasionally use the art glitter glue when I need some glue, but mostly for the binding, I'm going to be using some double-sided tape. And then finally, I like to um, pop up some of my um, embellishments with accents. So I have this glossy accents that I'll use on some of the pieces as well. Okay, and then of course you'll need your scoreboard and your paper trimmer. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's do, first we're going to do the back of the album. And just a note before we get started, I always read out my measurements as length by width. So just note that as I'm reading out, it will always be length by width. And um, the other thing that I do is I don't cut everything and then label them and then come back and build the album. We actually cut and glue together as we go, so we don't have to get mixed up at the end with which pieces go where. This is a very um, easy folio to build, so there's no need to build out the pages separately. Okay, with so getting that out of the way, and if you've watched my other tutorials, you already know, so sorry for the repetition, but if you're new, just important to know how I do this. Okay, so let's start with the base back of the album. And so this is gonna measure nine by eight and a half. And remember, you're using an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, so cut along the, your nine inches along the 11 inch side, just so you don't mess up your piece of paper. So it's already, cause it's already eight and a half inches wide. So we're just gonna cut that down at nine. Okay, and now we're gonna have a three quarter inch spine on this. So I'm putting the eight and a half inch side along the top of my scoring board and I'm gonna score here at three quarters, okay, on one side. And you can count across, or much easier, is just flip your paper around and score at three quarters on the other side as well. So you've scored at three quarters on each side. Okay, so we can just fold that. Oh, and just also one trick. When you're folding, always fold. So if I've scored on this side, I want to fold in. Because when you're scoring, what you're actually doing is stretching the fibers of the paper. So where I stretch them, which is on the other side, it's pushed out, I want that to be where the outside of the fold is so that the paper doesn't tear. So um, I actually had early on some issues with that and one of my subscribers gave me that tip and I've never forgotten and it just works like a charm. And so I've I know a few people are wondering what kind of paper to use so it doesn't crack. I've never had any paper crack when I follow um, that little simple rule. Okay, so that's the base back. So we can just set that aside for a second. And let's work on the left side. So you're going to cut two pieces for the left side. Um, they're very similar, uh, just but a little different. So our first piece is going to measure nine by seven and a half. So if you remember from just the walkthrough, we had it opening up, it's sort of a double fold on this side. So that's nine by seven and a half. Okay, and again, I'm gonna line up my short side along the top of the scoreboard, and I'm gonna score this 
at half an inch. There we go. Okay, so we set that aside. And actually, let's attach that while we're here, because I said we're going to attach as we go. So I've got my back of the album that we just made and the piece that we just cut, and we're going to attach this piece right here. Okay, so it's going to sit like this. Sorry, whoops. Okay, so what you're going to do is get your score tape and put it along um, the inside folded part, this little piece, this little edge here. And so now, just smooth that down. What I like to do is just pull back a little corner because I don't want to commit. This is really sticky stuff. So I just pull back a corner, which allows me to just attach um, this only up here. And then I can sort of line up before I commit. I can make sure everything's nice and lined up. And then you can go ahead and pull out the backing. And one thing to note is the placement of this is I, I'm not covering the score line. If I cover the score line, you will not have a nice um, tidy fold. So you always wanna be able to see the score line. Okay, so just I'm making the adjustments. All right, there we go. So that's the first piece of the left side. Okay, so now we can go ahead and cut the second piece for the left side. So this is gonna measure nine by seven and three quarters. Okay, so that's nine by seven and three quarters. Okay. And then you'll just line up your short side, so the seven and three quarter side across the top, and then go ahead and score this at half and then at three quarters. So this half score mark, this is the space that we'll attach our tape to. And then at three quarters, I want a little bit, uh, this, this little spine to create some space. Okay, so we can just fold those in. Okay, and now same as we did, we're going to get our score tape and we're going to just put it on this piece here between the edge and the first um, score line. And I'm just gonna say it again, but do not cover your score line with the tape, okay? Because you're gonna stick, when you stick this to the um, other piece of paper, you want your score line to show. And I'm really sorry for being repetitive. Like if, you've, if you're not new at this, you totally know what I'm talking about. And if you are new though, this is the kind of tip that if somebody doesn't say it in the end, it's really frustrating as you put your book together um, and notice that it's not opening and folding properly and, and staying shut. Okay, so I'm um, see I'm sticking right to the to the right of the little score line so I can see it. And I'm just making sure everything looks nicely lined up. There we go. Great. Okay, so where are we at so far? Is we've done the left side, which folds in nicely here. Now we can go ahead and do the right side. The right side is actually identical. So. We're going to do the exact same thing with two more pieces of paper. So for the right, once again, this over here, and measure out nine by seven and a half. Okay, and then score this at half. that piece to the other side so I'm going to open up so this is the middle again the back I'm going to attach this piece right here So 
sometimes I just also fold up like this. Shows me where the fold line, like make sure that I've got this right up to the edge, which in this case I don't. Pull that down a little bit more. And there we go. wasn't supposed to happen I let go a little bit there but there we go that worked out okay and now we're gonna cut the other piece um, which goes here and this piece um, is going to be we're not gonna have a spine on it we don't have room for that because this is going to be the closure flap at the top so I'm very simply gonna cut a piece that's nine by seven and a half and then just score that at half so nine Half, and we're just going to score this at half here. Flipped it upside down. And so I'm going to attach this um, piece right here. So I'll just set that aside for a second. And a bit of a fold. Drop my score tape. There we go. I'm actually just going to move this out of the way. I find if you do this on top of the scoreboard, um, depending on how hard you press, you might get some embossing uh, from this. So I'm just moving it off the scoreboard. Okay, so we can just stick down our score tape again. I will just open this up and so this is going to get attached right here so we can go ahead and do that and so really now like this is the foundation of this little recipe book so you can see how that was just pretty pretty easy and we're going to get to decorating pretty fast with this one there we go okay so that is sort of so far where we're at so now we can start to build out the other pages like that all right so first thing we can do is start to think about um, this sort of back piece. So in the back we have a waterfall and then two panels kind of coming down to close that up. So we can do that here now and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So first thing we'll do is attach is create the two flaps that come down and close this section and then we'll cut the pieces for the waterfall. Okay so for the two flaps that fold over the center waterfall that's attached the base back of the book you're going to need to cut two pieces, all right? And so those are going to measure um, four and a quarter by seven, okay? So let's just go ahead and take, I think this piece I've got actually measures seven. All right, so four and a quarter. Another one four and a quarter okay and now we're going to score these both the same way so line up your short end at the top of the scoreboard and then score these at half and then at three quarters Okay, and we'll 
cut the second, uh, sorry, we'll score the second one again at half and at three quarters. So you can leave these flaps as is. Um, I want to make them sort of uh, the chevron pointed. So I'll show you how I do that. So first of all, I'm measuring the length. I know that they're at seven and a half. So I'm just going to mark out the halfway point. Um, sorry, I know it's seven inches across. So I'm marking out the halfway point at three and a half. Okay. Um, so now I also know I don't want to come straight from this edge. I actually want to come from about an inch up. So I'm going to measure. Um, an inch on both sides. So actually this edge of my ruler is an inch. So I'm measuring from the second score mark. I'm measuring an inch up from there. Okay, so I'm just placing the ruler along this bottom, along the edge of that second score line. And then that's about an inch. And now very simply, I just need to draw a line from the center point I marked out here to the edge down here. Oops. You can erase all these little marks after, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and now I'm just simply going to cut along this line and along this line. So I'm going to use my paper trimmer, and with any luck, it will let me get through both of these. So this is when um, it's great. If you want to just cut with scissors, that's great. Um, if you have a paper trimmer that has a guide like this one does, with the little sort of has a, like a little wire, you probably can't see it. You can really tell um, where you're going to end up cutting. So you can just line that up quite precisely and just trim through that. Perfect, one side. I just flip this around and oops, line that up again. And there we go. Okay, so I'm just bringing back my album here. So now I just want to show you what I've done. I, when we were putting it together, I was calling this side that folded out with the little quarter inch um, with little spine over here. This was my left side. And then the one where we didn't add a spine was my right side. I realized actually it's the other way. So just flip your book, okay? Because um, you want your left side to be the one that folds out plain with no spine like that. And then your right side will be the piece that has the extra little quarter inch spine on it, okay? It's just a matter of preference that when you open your album, this opens like a regular book. If you do it the other way, then it opens this way, which some people find awkward. So anyways, I apologize for that. You flip it, just flip the book around. The center is still in the same place, okay? So if you open up, you'll have one, two, and then again on the left, one, two, so this is, I'm in, I'm attaching these pieces to the center. Okay, so I've gone ahead, these are all folded and they're going to go right here and they will cover up the waterfall. Well, it'll just look pretty. Okay, so I'm going to stick in this case, I'm gluing these down to the outside of the album. Actually, no, I'm gonna glue these in here to the inside of the album. So put your score tape along the outside fold and you can do that on both of the pieces. Now, 
So you're in the center of the back of the album, you're going to stick these down to the bottom edge. Oops, would help if I peeled off my corner. There we go. here there we go okay later on um, we will attach brads here and I'll show you how to do that but for now let's build out the center waterfall that will go right here Okay, so for the center waterfall piece, we're going to have seven waterfall flaps and they're going to look like this. So the front will be um, just plain and then when you flip it open, there'll be a pocket on the left side and the pocket will be where you put your recipe card in um, sideways and when you flip them all open, you'll be able to see what the recipes are. Um, so let's go ahead and cut those. You're going to need to make seven of these and so we'll do one together and then we can go off and do the rest and when we come back we'll insert them into the album so we're going to cut two pieces for each waterfall so first of all the waterfall pieces will measure six and three quarters sorry gave you the measurements backwards so five and a quarter inches tall by six and three quarter inches wide okay so let's go ahead and cut that down so five so you're cutting five and a quarter by six and three quarters. There you go. Okay, and now you're going to score this at half an inch along the long side. So you will put your short side or the five and a quarter inch side along the top and then score at half an inch. So this will be where we attach the waterfall. Okay, so we can go ahead and fold that down. And then for the little pocket piece, you're going to measure a piece that is one and three quarter inches by four and three quarters. So let's measure out four and three quarters by one and three quarters. Okay, so let's just put one together. So where is your pocket going to go? Just want to remind you, the pocket is on the left side of the flap when the flap opens up. So the best thing to do, just so you don't get mixed up, is to score all your pieces. So this is how we're going to be attaching them. We'll be putting our score tape on the back of this. And then when you flip over, the pocket goes over here. So get your glue, and this is very important, that you only glue very, very, very close to the edge. Otherwise, your recipe cards will not fit. So you don't want glue coming all the way in um, to your pocket. So take your time and go as close to the edge as you can. There we go, and then we can go ahead and glue that down um, edge to edge. Okay, so just line it up. I recommend you start gluing from the scored edge first, just in case you've cut it a little bit too long, then you can always go ahead and get your scissors and, and trim it off. All right, so there is the waterfall piece. So go ahead and make seven of these and then we'll come back and attach them to the album. Okay, so you should now have all of these ready to go with your little pocket stuck on the back and these will go into the center part here. And so we're going to start um, with the first one and we're just going to peel back a corner 
like that. And so where we are going to attach it is to the edge of this piece that we attached previously, okay? So the bottom edge of this. So not up at the top, but like right here. Okay, so just line that up. Um, oh, sorry, I should mention before we do this. This, these waterfalls are obviously, it's a little bit smaller than your back page. So my, what I usually like to do is just mark out um, the center, sort of how far I want to go from the edges like that. And then I'm just going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. So that looks like about a quarter inch. And then I'm just going to go in and draw like a very lightly, a light pencil mark here with my ruler. So which will serve as a guide while I'm putting in these waterfalls um, tabs. Okay. So if you're an expert waterfaller, you don't have to do that, but I find every little bit helps um, with the waterfall installation. Okay, so I'm just going to peel back this corner like I normally do, and then just lining up between my two pencil marks and right straight against the edge. And also the pencil marks help me judge whether I'm, I'm laying this down straight. Um, if you do one crooked, by the time you get to the eighth one, it'll, everything will kind of be sideways. All right, so there's my first one. Okay, and I'm not going to do all of these with you on the video. I'm just going to show you the first couple, and then you can go and, and do them on your own. Um, and when we come back, we'll continue with other parts of the book. So now I'm lining up to the bottom edge of the piece I just attached and making sure the pencil marks definitely are coming in handy for me. And I'm just going to pull that out. So there's number two. The other thing you can do is as you're putting the waterfalls in, just fold them down and make sure that they're they're lining up, okay, along the edges. Okay, here comes number three. So same thing, I'm going right up against the edge. I'm making sure that the sides are along the pencil. I'm going to fold these down and make sure everything looks lined up and it does. So it's perfect. And I can just pull that out. Okay. And let's do one more together. So line that up. It looks like I need to push this one over a little bit. Trying to make sure these are lined up. There we go. Okay, and just keep going. So we're actually finished the base of the album and it's time to start um, choosing some of the patterned papers because the next step is we're going to make the little pockets for our recipe cards to slide into. So I need to choose a background paper to which I'm going to adhere the little pockets. So I'm just going to open this book up again and we're going to work on the left side on this, oops, sorry, this camera bumping around. We're going to work on this piece here so that's the inside of the first uh the flap on the left and what you're going to do is choose a piece of patterned paper that you want to stick down here now i chose something that i'm not too fussed about because it's not going to show too much so this is part of the collection kit um, from the patterns but don't choose something where you'll be sad because it's going to be completely covered up with your recipe cards going up so just choose something basic that coordinates so I'm going to go with this yellow here okay so we're going to set the book aside and I'm going to show you what we're going to do next okay so first thing we're going to do is cut our patterned background and you're going to cut this at eight and three quarters tall by six and three quarters wide all right so let's go ahead and cut that so that's eight and three quarters by six and three quarters. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you that this is going to sit on this inside of this flap and we'll stick it down once we do all of our little, um, little strips that will hold our recipe cards. So they'll sit in here in little pockets all the way up, okay? So once you've done that, then go back and um, use your scraps 
obviously, if you can. And what I want you to do with the scraps is cut um, six, sorry, seven strips that will measure three quarters of an inch by six and three quarter inches, okay? So you're gonna cut seven of those. So let's just do one. So three quarters of an inch high. That, and then I want them the same width as my yellow piece of paper, so six and three quarters wide. Okay, so that's three quarters by six and three quarters. So there's our first little holder. Let's just do one more so I can show you how we're going to put them in. Quarters. Okay, I guess it would be faster if I just cut that strip down to six and three quarters first, but anyways. Okay, so let me just show you. So what's going, what, how this is going to work is we're going to glue these down just along the three edges all the way up the page. And we will decorate this um, later. But for now, we're just going to do that. So go ahead and cut five more of these. So we'll have seven in total. And when we come back, we will stick them in. Okay, so we are back again, and as you can see, I've got the strips lined up. Now, I know I had said seven, but it's actually only six because we can't have the top card kind of sticking out the top, and if we put another pocket up here, um, there's not enough space for the card to sit properly So, because they're all going to sort of slide into these little pockets. Um, so we're only going to adhere six of the strips. Um, if you cut an extra, don't worry, we will need those for the other side. So let's start um, gluing these onto our page. So what we're going to do is really simply um, use a fine tip glue if you can, so you can get a very, very thin um, little edge here. And glue is stuck. Usually I keep a pin in my glue, um, but lately that, I don't know, hasn't been working. Anyway, so hopefully this will work. Okay, third time's a charm. I think I got it now. So you're going to go ahead and make a very, clo very close to the edge, nice and thin little strip of glue along three edges. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to glue the first one down. Um, I'm gluing this about one eighth of an inch from the bottom edge, okay? And I have chosen this polka dot paper because actually it helps me see to line up. Although if you don't have um, something that kind of has natural markers, just make sure you're edge to edge. Okay, and there's sort of, there's my first piece glued down. Okay, and now take your second piece and again, glue along three edges, very, very close to the edge, as close as you can get. Take your time because you, you don't want to go in too far because you need enough space that doesn't have glue on it to get the card in. And now I'm going to stick this one about um, an eighth of an inch from the top of the, the last one. So you can use a ruler if you like um, or you can just sort of eyeball it. So this is about an eighth of an inch. So I'll put this here. Okay. okay, then we can do number three. And this is the last one we'll do together. And then you can pause um, the video while you do the rest of yours, stick them on. And then when we come back, we'll start to uh, decorate another part of the album. Okay, so you get the idea. So I've got, we've got three down now together. So put the other three, um, stick down your other three and we will be back in about a couple of minutes, thanks. Okay, so now you should have all of your six tabs glued down and you'll be able to put your cards into each of these slots. So I'm just showing you here um, because we still have to decorate this, but I just wanted to show you how this will look and it will be stuck down on this page. Um, what we're gonna do now is make the exact same thing 
we're going to do two more of these cards um, with the little pockets exactly the same way with six of these little pockets and they're going to go over here onto this side of the album and another one over here so you can hold lots of recipes um, in this album so I'll just quickly go over the measurements with you again um, you're going to cut your background card will be eight and three quarters by six and three quarters and then you're going to cut six of these little strips which will measure three quarters by six and three quarters across. And then just glue them down, leaving about um, an eighth of an inch or less between each of the cards. And make sure that your top card fits nicely. So you might just want to mark out where the positioning of your last pocket at the top needs to be so that your card can fit in without popping out over the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and make two more of these and then we can come back and start decorating the center part of the album and I'll show you how I um, make a closure for this section here. Okay guys, so I wanna show you um, the pages now that they're all in the album and how we're going to decorate these little pocket inserts. So I've glued down all three of my pages with this with little slits and I'm going to now decorate um, cover these in patterned paper so if you have um, well you do have the collection kit if you're following along with all of the same pieces as me so I'm going to use this strips page because each of the smaller strips are actually measuring three quarters of an inch now what I'm going to tell you is this once you put the recipe cards in you're only going to see the bottom strip okay so if you're like me and get excited about um, saving your best patterns and not wasting your paper in places that you can't see it I'm just gonna give you a word to the wise and you can do whatever you want but I'm going to use my three favorite patterns for the bottom strip because that's the only one that's ever going to be always showing and then um, whatever I have probably from scraps to cover up the other pieces okay so in this case I think like I just love the eggs so I'm probably going to use those here and the little kisses and the cupcakes um, so you do what you like but I just thought I would make that note so I'm going to cover up a couple of those um, together and then we'll go on to something else and you can sort of do these um, on your own so again these little strips the smaller ones are measuring exactly three quarters of an inch okay so you just want to go ahead and if you cut your strips at three quarters of an inch you shouldn't have to do any trimming um, but just you know do a quick comparison uh, before you glue everything down because if you're like me then sometimes you measure a little bit off okay so this one looks like the right width so I'm just going to cut this at six and three quarters because that is the same length as the backing we go and we'll just stick this one down just so you can see what it all looks like and for these I did not usually I leave like a little white um, trim I didn't do that because that's back here on the background so we don't need to do that so I'm just going to put some glue on the back of this there we go and stick this one down. I just want to show you so you can get an idea. And then of course you can go and decorate these on your own. So I do have a little bit of an overhang here, which is not a big deal, but if you're you know, a perfectionist, you can probably go in very, very gently with an X-Acto knife. Otherwise, um, you might just leave well enough alone. Okay, so your cards will fit so sweetly into these and you could just continue to cover all of these okay so what i want to work on now is this middle section um, so you'll have to choose your patterned paper for the top and choose two brads so if you have kitchen theme brads great if you are using plain brads that's wonderful too um, but go ahead and choose your patterns for here and your brads and we'll come back and i'll show you how we're going to decorate this part Okay, so I've gone ahead and chosen my patterned papers and I'm going to cut them to size to fit on top of these two flaps. And so the way, I just wanna show you how I'm doing that. So I put my patterned paper underneath and I'm just simply tracing around the edge of the cardstock so I know where to cut 
okay? So there we go. That gives me my marks, my exact shape of what I'm going to cut. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and um, do that with the top as well. And the reason I'm doing this separate is just in case, um, in the event that when I cut these, I made a little mistake. If one's slightly off, you do wanna measure them both separately. So, um, it's a bit awkward because I'm using paper from the six by six pad, which does fit, but I'm gonna put it on sort of this funny angle, but it works. Okay, so I just wanna show you how I'm going to do that. So then you can just go ahead and either trim that um, with your scissors or in your paper cutter. So I prefer to use my paper cutter. So go ahead and um, cut your pieces for just the top so you don't need to decorate the back just yet. Um, but actually, sorry, having said that, what you want to do is perhaps cut, once you've cut the front for each side, go ahead and, and measure it out and cut the back as well. We just won't attach it um, right away because we're going to put the brads on and then put the piece over. So let's go ahead and cut two pieces. Once you've measured them out and traced them, cut your two pieces for the top and two pieces for the bottom. Okay, so now let's work on this section here that we cut the pieces for. Um, I'm just going to show you what I'm using, and you can use whatever you have in your stash. So I cut, I cut out my decorative paper that I'm going to use for these pieces. And then well, how this is going to close is I'm going to have a brad here and a brad down here, and then I'm going to attach a piece of twine to the bottom brad and then just be able to wind it up at the top to keep it closed. So um, here is the piece of twine. This piece I've measured at, let's see, Dean about uh, 24 inches. I don't think we'll need the whole thing, but just letting you know, I've got a 24 inch piece of twine and then I'll cut it off um, where I need it. I also happen to have these really cute little brads in my stash. You can use plain brads as well, so it doesn't have to be these, but I thought I have them, so I may as well use them here, why not? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is actually glue down our patterned paper to the top and bottom sections. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'll just stick that on. And I don't have a border on these ones. Okay, so I've cut them to the exact size as the cardstock, as the white cardstock. So there's one. Just get the other one glued on. So once you have those glued on, take um, whatever, something pointy, a needle, if you've got this tool from um, Making Memories Kit, you can use it. But you're going to poke a hole now exactly where you want to put your brads, which would be just about, um, about a half an inch up from the bottom point, depending on the size of your brad. So I want my brad to sit about here. So it looks actually about three quarters of an inch up from the point. So do this on a self-healing mat so that you don't poke yourself. So just poke a little hole there. There we go. Just gonna wiggle it around just so it's big enough to fit my brad. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom side. There we go. What I really like about this album is, again, I'm not using any magnets. Um, so if you like magnets, that's great. I've got other tutorials with lots of magnets, but I find it gets a little tedious and it gets expensive. All right. So before I attach the bottom brad, I'm going to tie 
the twine around it. So I'm just gonna tie a little knot in the base and I'm probably gonna put some glue down too just for good measure because I don't want this to come loose at any point in time during my use of this recipe album. So I'm just tying a knot down here to just tie another knot. Okay, so just a double knot. That should do it. Okay, and I'm going to put a dot of glue just to secure this in place. Okay, maybe more than a dot. There we go, sorry about that. Okay, so now that's all attached. There's a bit of dot of glue on there and I'm going to go ahead and insert my brad. And before I get it all the way in, I just wanna cut off this bit of string. Don't cut it too close because it might unravel, but just enough so you can tuck it under and out of, out of sight like that. And now I can just open up my brad. Okay, another trick is um, instead of tying in a knot there, you can actually pull the string through into the other side as well and then wrap it around the back of your brad. That's actually an extremely secure way to do it. Okay, I'm just gonna use the back of my scissors to make sure that's nice and flat. Okay, so that's there. And when I'm ready, I can go ahead and put down my cardstock that I've cut for the back of this piece. So we can do that later. And I'm just going to show you um, that we'll attach the top. So because I'm using a larger brad, I wanna make sure that it's not too flush with the paper and um, I need to be able to get my twine around it to wrap around. So what I'm going to do is, instead of just inserting the brad all the way in, I'm going to sort of leave it so there's a little bit of space on the side. So I'm not putting it flush with the paper um, beneath it, okay? If that makes sense. Because I want to be able to get underneath it with my twine. So there we go. All right, so I should be able to take my twine and wrap it around like so. Okay, I just wanna hold it flat, kind of eyeball. You want this one to be a little loose, okay? So you don't need to wrap it around many, many times, like just once even is fine. You just want it to stay closed. So I'm gonna cut it to about here. Okay, so it looks like we needed maybe about um, 12 inch, a 12 inch piece of twine for this. And I'm just gonna knot the end just so it doesn't unravel. There we go. Okay, so that's how we'll keep this middle section of the album closed. So it's pretty easy. And no magnets and super cute. Okay, so now you can go ahead and decorate the back pages. And when we come back, we'll start to decorate the center piece um, with our cards. I do wanna show you one thing though, before we keep going. So I'm going to be using these little plastic sleeves to protect my recipe cards. That way when you go to make a recipe, you can just pull out the card for whatever you're making and put it on your counter and this is nice and protected. What these are are actually um, big 12 by 12 sheets of little protectors that I've cut up. Um, it's a divided 12 by 12 sheet. So I've just cut, them, cut up the four by six picture holders and I'm using those. So if you have page protectors, four by six protectors, go ahead and use them. I'm trying to use up things that are in my stash. So I just wanted to sort of show you um, what I've done. And this is, here's what I'm using. There we go. So I had these in my stash and I really have no use for this. I don't scrapbook like this. So I'm cutting these out and I'm using them as the, pro the protectors. Another thing that I saw at the dollar store um, and I thought it was pretty interesting that I thought I would share with you is some laminating sheets. So
so these apparently, and I haven't tried them before, but um, what you do is peel, there's sort of two sheets of, pl of plastic. You peel one back, put your cards down, peel off the backing and stick it down and it laminates the cards for you. So I'm gonna try this with a couple of them, but just giving you um, some different ideas of how you can protect your recipe cards so that they don't get dirty um, when you're actually using them because I'm hoping that this is a practical recipe album and not one that we just keep on the shelf. And if you're gifting it, I'm sure, and you're giving it to a non-scrapbooker, you wanna make it something that they'll be able to actually use. Okay, so I'm going to continue decorating parts of the album that I think would be of interest. I won't go through the entire um, decorating process. You can kind of look at the walkthrough and see if you want to copy exactly what I've done or I just leave it up to you. But there's a couple of things that I think are important to note. So one, of course, was how to do these flaps. The second one is around um, these inside waterfall pieces. So you might wonder why I didn't put the pattern paper down first and then add this pocket. It's because this is going to be fairly thick with the sheet protector. And so I don't want anything interfering. I don't want any extra bulk in the pocket. So I just want to do my pattern paper um, right on top, just up to this pocket and then embellish the pocket itself. So let's just do one of those together um, and then we'll move on to the outside cover. So I'm going to use my six by six pad here. And again, like I'm going for papers where um, I'm just not like, I'm not too concerned to use them up because a lot, you won't really see much of it, but it's still, it's still going to show. So I'm saving my favorite papers for bigger spaces. So let's just start one here with this little flowered print. This is adorable. So I am just you can measure, but I just actually like to mark with pencil where I need to be. So like I said, we're going to glue right up until the edge of the pocket, but I do want to leave a little tiny bit, like maybe I'm um, just shy of one eighth of an inch trim. So I'm going to cut um, to here and then just up to there. So let me go ahead and cut that. There we go. Okay, and so you can see how that will sit nicely here with a nice little bit of white edge. Now we just a little, need a little trim piece for here and I think I will go ahead and use this. So again, I'm just measuring it out with a pencil. And again, you want to stay nice and close to the edge of your paper while you're getting your glue. There we go. I'm just gonna erase my little pencil marks here. And that's how that will look. Adorable. And then you can just slide your cards in and out nicely. Okay, so we'll go ahead and you can decorate the rest of those at your uh, preference and however you like. And I'm going to show you now how to do the belly band. And also I would recommend before you can start decorating the whole album, there's you can see you've got a few pages here where you'll need some big pieces of paper. So make sure you choose what you'd like for those larger sets before you kind of um, use up your paper and cut it up. So I've already chosen my paper for the outside of the album. So I've used this gingham check and then this cute little um, fork and spoon paper on the bottom. 
and then the gingham chuck continues all around. And I want to um, use a belly band to keep this closed, so that's what we're going to make next. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're going to make the belly band. So for the belly band, you're going to need to make um, two strips. So I'm just pulled out some of my scraps here from the heavy cardstock, the 110 pound. So my first strip is going to measure one and a half inches by seven. So let's measure that out first. So there's my seven by one and a half. Okay, and that's going to be um, across the front of the book. So we're not scoring this one, we're just gonna set it aside. Your second piece is going to measure 10 and 1 eighth. So 10 and 1 eighth, also by one and a half. And this piece we will be scoring. Okay, so there's your two pieces that you have cut and we're gonna score the longer piece. So we'll just set that aside. Now, put your strip with the long side across the top of your scoreboard and we are going to score this in four places. So first we're gonna score this at half an inch. Okay, next we're gonna score this at one and a half inches. Okay, next we're going to score this at eight and five eighths. And so this is important that you score at five eighths and not at eight and a half because you won't be able to slide it over the album easily. Okay, so, so far we have half an inch, one and a half, eight and five eighths, and now at nine and five eighths. Okay, there we go. So Let's just fold those and just gently burnish those. Okay, so that is going to be um, the back. So I'm going to bring back my short piece and we're going to stick these together. So you can either use glue or your double-sided tape here but we're simply going to attach the front piece to the back along these half inch little flaps that we made. Okay, so put enough glue on here so that this is nice and sturdy. And we will we'll decorate this later, but we just wanna get the construction of it done. Okay, and now I'm just going to glue this on one end And over here onto the other. Okay, so there is the belly band. Now let's just bring our book back out and make sure that this fits nicely. So I want it to go over the book without having to really force it to slide up and down. So, perfect. Okay, so there's a the belly band and I will be using um, a whole bunch of the cut of cutouts from this collection kit to decorate the front when it's time. But now we've got that out of the way. If you don't want to use a belly band, the other thing you can do is um, I'm noticing that actually this book has enough weight that it doesn't need any magnets. So it would stay closed on its own and you can just embellish the front how you like. The reason I'm deciding to use a belly band is I want to use a lot of the cutouts and I want to be able to sort of slide that out of the way when I'm in the kitchen and using the book, um, just so it doesn't get ruined if it's stuck right onto the front cover. So that's really the reason, but you don't have to, you can leave it plain. Um, or you can glue your embellishments right on here. I was gonna suggest you could put some magnets in, but you really, I, I find you won't need them with this album. Okay guys, so I went ahead and finished decorating and here's the finished product. So I'm gonna do just a quick little flip through so you can see um, what it all looks like put together. So we have just this left side, 
with the pockets and the recipe cards. And then over here on the right, this opens up twice and all our recipe cards are in the pockets that we put in. And then here's the waterfall in the center. So if you want a slower walkthrough, check out the actual walkthrough video. It's just a couple of minutes, but I go into a bit more detail with how I decorated um, each of the pages. But that's about it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoy using um, this cute little recipe book. Thanks for watching.